Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Living in the Red Dot. This is May from Singapore. Today, I would like to talk to you about the Narciso Rodriguez Cube line. Um, this is not the For Her line, which are perfumes that are um, on the rectangular upright uh, bottles. I'm talking about the ones that come in cubes, which came a little bit later, which are these. So if this is something you're interested in, please stay tuned. So first let's talk about Narciso Rodriguez. He is a um, American designer and he is born from, um, he's born of Cuban parents and his claim to fame um, is uh, the wedding gown of Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. Um, back then he was still a relatively unknown designer and he was commissioned to make her wedding dress for her secret wedding and um, if you're not familiar with it I'm sure if you see this picture right here you'll be like yeah that's the one so his style is very simplistic very streamlined elegant and sophisticated um, it's very much along the lines of um, Calvin Klein and DKNY, the minimalist uh, type of um, style and look. Um, he is from New Jersey after all, so it's very close to New York where all the um, um, high class you know, celebrities are. Um, so um, I'm sure you're familiar with the For Her line of Narciso Rodriguez, um, but I won't talk about that here. I will focus on the cube line because the musk on the cube line um, tends to work much, much better with my skin chemistry and it smells much better um, in my nose. Uh, to me, uh, Narciso Rodriguez has actually made the office scent, office perfume into an art. He just makes the most gorgeous um, office appropriate uh, perfumes out there. Um, his perfumes are very feminine, inoffensive, pleasant, um, very soft and very cozy type of scents. Um, they, they really are very, very comforting um, scents that, you know, people tend to uh, gravitate to, especially in the office. I remember back in uh, 2000s when I, when I worked in the office, um, the, our HR department sent out a notice that, you know, from now on, um, people are not allowed to have heavy, to put on heavy perfumes, lotions, or even bring food uh, that may, um, smell too strong uh, for the office environment. Um, we're asked to be mindful of allergies and all that. So um, I think um, Narciso Rodriguez uh, really, really succeeded in um, filling out that you know, you know that that need in the office when you can have this soft, uh, pleasant uh, scents. So, without further ado, let's go to the very first one in the line. So back in 2014, um, he released Narciso EDP, which came in a kind of whitish cream bottle. This one, right here. So all his perfumes um, have the Narciso musk in the heart. Everything really revolves around the musk. All the florals or all the base notes, they work together to highlight that musk in um, Narciso Rodriguez perfumes. Um, his perfumes are never overly complicated. Uh, you've got the florals and you've got the base. Um, and the whole line of this, this cube line, um, I think it's very appropriate in the in, in whatever season or whatever type of weather since the office environment is quite controlled um, mostly um, with uh, air conditioning on so really if you have the collection of this this cube line it's really about just choosing which one you want to 
you want to wear uh, for that day? What do you feel like? What kind of vibe do you want to give out? Do you want to feel a little bit sexy, a little bit more bossy, a little bit more, um, you know, cheery? Do you want to be taken seriously that day? Do you have a big meeting? So, you know, so really I think this collection um, will have something for everyone, for any type of outfit that they have. In fact, I think it's a great a perfume wardrobe to complement uh, maybe a capsule wardrobe, um, you know, that mil minimalistic uh, look. So, so yeah, so, so this one, this Narciso perfume that was released in 2014, basically in the top notes it has uh, gardenia and white rose, the middle is musk, and then in the base, you've got the common ingredients that he uses for this line, which is cedar vetiver and um, white cedar extract. So out of all um, the perfumes in this collection, I find this one is the most appropriate for, um, you know, having wanting to be taken seriously during that day like let's say you have like a meeting with your boss or a meeting with um, your staff that kind of thing or a meeting with with your with your colleagues even it's the opening is a bit sharp but then it, it settles down and turns more woody and then in the middle you've actually or mixing in you've got that kind of milky gardenia that mixes in with the musk really well so because of the woodiness um, in the base um, this gives it that kind of slightly you know masculine feel now all the Narciso Rodriguez perfumes are feminine but you know within that range of femininity there is you know um, there is a uh, you know, the part or, or, or one end where you can be really feminine or one end where you can be a little bit more masculine in a sense, you know, boss type of scent. Um, it's not quite boss type, but this, this does garner attention and respect, I think, for someone who is wearing it in a corporate like environment. So that's the Narciso uh, EDP 2014 and then in 2015 uh, they released an EDT version which is in a black bottle okay. uh, I, I love these bottles I mean look at that like having them on display you know when you have a, a kind of like a minimalistic room where everything is like kind of like beige and brown I think these things just like stand out and um, but at the same time the streamlined like you know lines uh, kind of blend in well in that environment so the EDT um, some some people might think that you know it's a bit redundant to have the EDT when I already have the EDP um, but that's not the case because um, you know for the top note of the EDT, they have replaced the gardenia with peony. Um, so peony is much, much airier, much lighter. Um, but, but you know, at the same time, I do find it more sharper than this. Um, I actually think this leans more masculine than this one. I think this is really great for like. Um, you know, being out uh, maybe in a corporate dinner or with your bosses or, you know, you want to impress your managers um, or perhaps you're with a client and you're trying to kind of um, sell a product or get your point across. Um, and this, this, this really has that kind of sharpness that kind of like, you know, make people pay attention. Um, now having said that, it is an EDT, so it doesn't quite last as long as, as this, but for an EDT, it can last um, to like maybe like four or five hours, whereas this is five hours plus. Um, I think you can even have both, maybe have this in an atomizer in your purse um, to kind of refresh throughout the day. Um, and this one you spray in, in, in the morning. 
so many ways to mix and match like this too. Some say this could be good for maybe like winter, this is for summer since it is lighter, but you know, it's really, I think it's really up to you as to what you want to, what vibe you want to exude that day or what goes with your outfit even. So this is the Narciso EDT 2015. Um, 2016 they released uh, Narciso Pudra. Pudra means powdery. So um, the name speaks for itself. It is a slightly powdier, uh, more powdery version of, of this, um, but not quite. Now I don't have the cube bottle. I do have the purse spray. Let me bring it over for you. Right here. So the bottle for this one is a blush colored. A lot of people get confused between the two, but one, uh, the, the colors are quite different. One is blush, that's the poudre, and then you got um, the ivory, white ivory, that's the regular EDP. So poudre, poudre, what's different? Uh, top notes for poudre are uh, jasmine, Bulgarian rose, orange blossom, and again in the heart is the musk, and at the base you've got cedar, vetiver, coumarin, and patchouli. Um, despite having patchouli on this, uh, for those of you who don't like patchouli, I don't really, I don't think the patchouli here is quite prominent. I think they use it more as an anchor um, and as a way to to help the longevity of the perfume. Um, I really don't smell the, the patchouli, you know, um, that much. And I'm usually pretty good at, spell, at smelling patchouli um, these days. Um, what you do smell a lot here is the orange blossom to me. Uh, I smell a bit of the jasmine, a uh, bit of the rose, but those kind of mix in. I think the orange blossom is quite prominent in this one. Um, so I feel that this one is warmer uh, with a with a patchouli. I think it makes it warmer, more. This is very feminine. Um, I imagine someone wearing this with kind of like a, you know a flirty like you know a line swinging skirt as opposed to a pencil skirt. I mean, this one and this one is more of like a pencil skirt uh, type of outfit or maybe pantsuit. This one is, I, I see someone wearing like pastel colors, like ivory colors, just very, very light and feminine. So I would, you know, I would pick this, you know, if you're having like um, uh, maybe a lunch or meetings with your peers, you know, very friendly, very approachable um, type of uh, situations because that's what it is. It just it's it's so pleasant that people just I didn't want to lean in and kind of like be around you and smell you um, so poudre I think a lot of people like poudre um, some say it may be more mature because of the powdery aspect but to be honest I don't find it that powdery at all sure in relative terms it's more powdery than this but you know I've had other I've smelled other powdery perfumes and I'll get to that on the next um, perfume I'm going to talk about. So this is Poudre 2016. So in 2018, um, Narciso released um, Narciso Rouge EDP. Um, I don't have uh, the bottle for that one. It's um, a red cube bottle with a red uh, plastic cap. Um, I do have the purse spray here, but I will put a picture up here of what um, the EDP bottle looks like. So um, this scent is um, again different um, than slightly different than the other ones that I've shown you earlier because this actually strays in the more sexy sensual territory. It's great for um, you know, people who have plans to go out later in the evening. So you, you know, you, you can just like um, uh, top up with this before, before going out. Um, so what's different is this one has um, iris and Bulgarian rose as the top notes. And the middle you've got the musk, of course. 
but you also have tuberose and orange blossom in the in the heart notes mixed in with the musk. Now tuberose has always been considered, I guess, a strong, sexier scent. Um, and I think this is what carries it through to that kind of sexy, sensual territory. Um, but not so much because the musk like kind of tapers it down. Um, it is a powdery scent. Um, I find it a little bit more powdery than this one, the the poudre, um, because it does have iris in it. Um, yeah, so at the base, this one has, let's see, um, cedar vetiver, white cedar extract, sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla. So to dry down for this one is the sweetest so far. Um, this one has a slight sweetness, the poudre. Um, EDP does not, um, EDT, no, not really, this one is quite sharp, sharp. there's no sweetness to it. Um, so this one is straying to the sweet um, territory, which is, you know, again, makes it a little bit more sensual, like somebody want to lean in and, 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 and smell you because, um, uh, you know, you've got like the florals and the sweetness and the musk all coming and mixing in together and it just, it smells really good. Um, this is one of my favorites in the bunch. Um, not quite the top, but probably top three. Um, so this is the EDP. Now in 2019, they did release an EDT and it would be this one, Narciso Rouge EDT right here so very similar to the EDP bottle except the cap is clear so for the auto toilets you'll see that the caps are actually clear whereas the EDPs they are solid color they're not transparent plastics so what's different with the EDT um, well you've still got rose rose is the top note but they took out the iris and replaced it with lily of the valley and and in the heart note um there's no tuberose there's no orange blossom it's just the musk just like all the other um narciso perfumes and then at the base you've got the cedar vetiver white cedar extract and tonka bean so they left the tonka bean um but took out the vanilla so it's not as sweet. It's still sweet um, compared to, to these guys, but not as sweet as the EDP. Um, and the funny thing is, despite not having iris, I actually find this one is the most powdery of all the Narciso, um, of all the Narciso perfumes in the cube line. It's so powdery that I made the mistake of kind of spraying it kind of like close um, to my chest area and then inhaling it that I just like, kept coughing. Um, it's lighter uh, because now they have Lily of the Valley and taken out like Iris, but I don't think it changed or actually, yeah, I don't think that has anything to do with it being powdery. So I'm not sure where the powderiness is coming from um, in this perfume, but you know, just keep in mind, if you don't like powdery stuff, don't. Um, Poudre is not even like this, this powdery is, that one is just light. So you want lighter um, than the EDP, then go for this one. But if you don't like powder, don't, don't buy this one. Um, I, I, yeah, that's, <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend it. So that's the EDT Narciso Rouge 2020, the latest, um, re, well, at least, the latest one that I have in my collection is Narciso Rodriguez Ombre, which is this wonderful peach bottle right here. This is an EDP. By the way, this is a 30 ml bottle. I have a mixture of sizes, 30, 30 ml, uh, 50 ml, and then I've got the purse sprays. So, Again, this one is slightly different 
because the top notes have a lot of yellow kind of tropical flowers. You got Frenchy Penny, Ylang Ylang, uh, white florals, and then in the heart notes, of course, you've got the musk and the amber. Usually the amber is used as a base note because it can be quite strong um, and it it's nice to hold down, you know, like the perfume, especially if you've got like kind of very fizzy, um, uh, fizzy top notes that are more citrusy kind of things. So anyway, I always see, I almost always see amber as a base note, but for here it's a heart note. And at the base you've got vanilla and you've got cashmere. In. So this I think for now is my favorite out of the line. Um, it it's just it's so warm and it's so cheerful. Like I feel I feel so cheery and approachable when I'm wearing this one. It's so it's so pleasant, you know. It's just like if I'm really in a good mood, if I want to be in a good mood, this 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 can this can do it for me. Um uh, like the Frenchy Penny in it, it it reminds me of a kind of like a weaker version of the Frenchy Penny in um, Chanel Beige from the exclusive uh, collection. Um, it's not as strong, obviously, but I think the Frenchy Penny here um, mixes it in really well with the musk. Again, it makes it very smooth and well rounded. Um, and Yes, it says amber, but again, um, despite being in the heart notes, I don't really smell amber that much. Um, if uh, I'm sure it's there, but again, it's kind of the whole thing is just, to me, it's so well blended. Like there's no edges. I find it hard to see where one note ends and the other one kind of comes in. They just work so well together. And with the vanilla, the base, and the cashmere, and it's just... It, it's so sweet and cozy and you know like a and um, some people have compared it to Tom Ford's Orchid Soleil um, I, can, I can see it I can see why they would say that uh, I think it's because of the yellow yellow flowers in it um, but again it's a much softer version of Orchid uh, Soleil by Tom Ford I have done a review about that so um, that one is quite strong, you know, floral strong, um, with tuberose and everything. So this is this is just very soft and pleasant. So, um, you know, this is widely available in in stores um, here in Singapore. Um, you know, can find it at Tangs or Metro. Um, and if you have a chance, just go ahead and like and, and, and smell it and try it out. Um, I think a lot of people have complained about the longevity this, because despite being an EDP, um, it doesn't last as long as these guys. But to me, I mean, it lasts like maybe like five, five hours, but it smells so good. I don't mind respraying. So anyway, so that's the end of um, you know my review for the Narciso Rodriguez uh, cube line. There are a couple more in the cube line but um, I think they're exclusively sold in certain places like Russia so and um, you know I, I am not so gung-ho on looking for them to complete this collection. I just think this is a, a beautiful collection. Usually I I gravitate towards stronger gourmands. Like I mean very strong gourmands. My nose is quite used to the strong sweet scents and my skin actually tends to tends to work very well with gourmand fragrances. Um, so despite them being strong, you know, my skin can, can hold it down so it, it doesn't appear too, too cloying and too much uh, projecting. But for office scents, um, I think these, these guys, you can't go wrong with these guys. Um, they can make a great present. Um, people who are used to the, for her line, um, may find quite a difference between this line and that one. Um, but again, um, they are widely available, so easy enough to, to, to try a few times before you decide to buy. But 
Anyway, so um, that's it for me. Um, I hope you enjoy this review. And if you do, please press like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much.